Crypto Dog to the rescue here. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. There's no value to you, but it has great value to me and the dogs that I'll be rescuing in the near future as uh, I am doing a side hustle, wag walking, so I am building my own financing and I could definitely use the help in um, that regard uh, when it comes to liking, subscribing, um, commenting. That all helps, um, you know, push forward and, uh, you know, start monetizing, you know, for the dogs. Everything I do here is for the dogs. So let's get right into it. I'm not going to get into the market cap or anything today. Uh, this is Ethereum USDT on KuCoin. Uh, this is kind of my chosen pair that I'm going to be trading, uh, you know, specifically. And I just opened up my computer and I want to show you what I'm looking at right at the moment here. And about five minutes ago, I start, I put this little uh, corridor in here because as you can see, it's going sideways at the moment. You know, when it comes to the whole market, there's a big violent move here and now it's kind of corrected back and now it's kind of just going sideways at the moment. 30 minute chart, doesn't matter what chart you use. This is using the 20 MA and the 200 MA. So let's get right into it here. So the 200 MA, okay, that's your kind of your overall control here is going flat. Okay, when a 200 MA goes flat, that is king. And when a 200 MA is king, it reacts as the support resistant line um, so, it, you know, as far as breaking new highs, it really is hard to break new highs out of here um, because it does act as a support resistant, um, depending on when where the sideways market is at that moment. So right now it's working as a resistant point and the 20 MA is now turned to a downtrend. So now we can see what's going on. All right. Um, you can see that it's now breaking the 20 MA with a red bar and the probability, you know, as you can see, MACD ready to sell and um, your RSI pretty much is riding at 44, 43. So it's it's still in a sell point. So this is what you say, you know, it is, is um, when it's on a downtrend, even though it's going sideways, you understand that it's going to go down. So this is where you want to start buying it is is down here below the red on a sideways market. Buy it under the red, and then I'll sell it over the red. Buy it, sell it until there's a you know a violent move somewhere. And I'm not saying that there may be a violent move right now. It may come go completely down and make you know a new low, you know, or a new high. Um, it, but the probability of it going a little bit farther down, right, and then correcting. There's more probability of that than than a major breakout, and we're st and you're still going to kind of set you up yourself up um, to a certain degree um, for success. So uh, let's say you buy it down here when it's red, right? You buy it down here when it's red, and it goes back up, and it breaks a new high. Well, you just made a huge amount of money. Well, what's the probability that it's going to come all the way down here and then break down? Uh, to to uh, a, a newer low, you know, I mean at the moment, you know, or, or correct itself even back down to here um, You know not that much probability, you know It's been two days three days since that's since that low has happened and it's kind of made a new high Right and now it's corrected itself back down about halfway between that low and that high It's corrected itself and now going sideways in the market that makes sense Again, there is a probability that it may go down more, but the probability is not in in that favor. It's in your favor, um, which is depending on how you're looking at it. So this is what I wanted to show everybody today. And again, I am looking at a 30 minute chart, so I'm not going to sit here and look at this for 30 minutes with you. But I do want to show you the difference in, in when you're looking at it. it doesn't matter what chart you're looking at. You know, I'm working on Hong Kong time. Um, at the moment. So right now it's what, 6.30 their time, 6.30 in the morning. And I'm start, I usually start to look at it about 6.30 in the morning to about 9.30 in the morning. I'll start looking at it because uh, Japan opens up at around eight o'clock futures. So it, it there there's some violent movement when, when Japan and UK open up and America is kind of sporadic when they open up and close. So now, as you can see the MACD, it's crossed down under, it's now turning red, right? And uh, our RSI is going sideways, so it makes sense. You know, there's going to be a battle. Obviously, we all know that there's going to be a battle here. So, you know, say I didn't want to work at the 30 minute chart and I want to go into the five minute chart. Right. Just to see kind of what's going on here. Is, is, is this still doing the same thing so I can rely that my 30 minute chart is looking the same way? 
Yes, I absolutely can. So you know, I'll go into any chart. And well, let's go into five minute chart and I'll show you. So um, now that the blue is underneath, it's kind of on an uptrend, but it's kind of going sideways for the most part. And now it's, you know, they're going in different directions. The red's going down, the blue's kind of gradually going up. So what do you do? You follow the 20 MA for the most part. And as you can see, it's still going sideways on a five minute market uh, uh, chart. So it hit the green, hit green, it did not break over. Red, now down, now this is gonna act as a, as a support line. It is now broken under the support line and we are now at some green here. So is it gonna come back up? Is it going to change the direction? The MACD says it's already, it already took a sell point, right? And now it's going down. So the probability in your RSI is down here at 33. So the probability that it will correct itself at least back up to the blue 200 MA is much better, um, much, much better than 50-50, okay? And it doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but we can sit here and watch this for, you know, a couple minutes and we'll see what happens on, my, on the next bar. Um, and, you know, we'll go from there and I'll fast forward it um, if needs be, if I don't, you know, find something knowledgeable to tell you and information to tell you. But we'll fast forward uh, through this last two minutes here, as you can see. Uh, but I believe that it will correct back up um, and, you know, the red will come down and this will come up a little bit to the blue and it'll be a little convergence right there of the, of the 200 and the 20. And, uh, you know, then it comes to what's going to happen at that point. You know, is it going to boom up? Is it going to boom down? It really all depends on which way the 200 and the 20 MA start directing itself when they kiss each other. Um, they're not going to cross, you know, like the MACD, obviously. So, it, you know, there's something dramatic is going to be happening, I believe here pretty soon. Not hugely dramatic, but, you know, it'll possibly break out of this sideways market, um, either on whether it be on the downside or on the upside. So uh, we shall see. So we still got a minute left on here. So, um, you know, again, I did want to touch on that I am doing a um, crowdfunding on uh, Start Some Good platform for a dog sanctuary, dog rescue that I want to do in the northern part of my state. So where it's much cooler, it's not in the desert, it's not 110 degrees out in the summertime. It's like 80, 85 in the summertime. And, you know, it snows um, uh, in the wintertime, but not, you know, not hugely. And it's not bad weather at all. Um, and then I want to use cryptocurrency mining because I've been mining as well. I have uh, six GPUs running at the moment. Um, AMD GPUs and um, mining Ethereum um, and Metaverse and Ethereum Classic and then, you know, a couple other coins uh, on the algorithm. So because uh, those are the most profitable and I'm just collecting coins at this point, hopefully for the retail boom. So, uh, you know, 27 seconds left. Uh, as you can see, it's start. It's still green. Uh, it did have, you know, as you can see, it had a what do they call that? A morning star or upside down hammer of some sort, but the greens barely won that one. I mean, they ate away all that red or all that, uh, yeah, all that red away and the greens now took it. Um, and now the next one's starting green and it's almost over. So it was a fight, but it's pretty solid green bar, but small. So we'll see on the next one, which one way, which way it turns. Um, on the next five minutes, you know, and it, again, you can you can go to any chart with this and really look. And you know, as you can see on the one minute, uh, there's a lot of gaps, a lot of gapping in between, which is I don't like using the one minute. So let's check, take a look at three minute. So three minute, that's only got about 37, 30 seconds left, and uh, downtrend, right? Support resistance going sideways on the three minute chart. So this is telling me that it's still on its way down or it's gonna start going sideways, maybe a small correction up and kiss on the 20 MA. So um, that's where you start getting a little confusing when you start moving from chart to chart and you think that that's helping you. It, it really starts, con you know, it doesn't. So stick with one chart if you can. Simplify your technical trading as much as possible. Simplify it. So like I said, I just got into this market and I usually look at the 30 minute chart as my overall view to kind of show me what's going on and as you can see, sideways, okay, it's going on a downtrend, and this is still on its way kind of down on a 30-minute uh, chart, but um, we shall see. You know, as you can see on the five-minute chart, uh, looks like that it's, this is going up, this is going down, still on a downtrend. So, 
Yeah, uh, I'm not saying it's going to correct up right now to that red, you know, to the 20 MA. 20 MA is going to come down, and this is going to obviously trickle down into it and kiss it. So, uh, you know, we shall see on that point what exactly happens on there. So, uh, three minute chart, five minute chart, right? Yeah, let's stick to the five minute chart for now, um, and then we can go from there. So like I said, I'll fast forward through here so we don't have to sit here and watch this the whole time. But um, yeah, there, there's a, you know, the 20 MA and the 200 MA simplifies your training um, and it helps you with the downtrends and the uptrends and the sideways market. And we are absolutely on a sideways market right now. So the 20, 200 MA has come down and now it's starting to correct itself, possibly on a, a swing up, possibly. Uh, on the next, you know, correction here. So uh, we shall see on that and uh, we'll go from there. Let me zoom in here so everybody can kind of see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I want to get my, my, my sideways market support resistance here on there so you guys can kind of see what's going on and then I'll kind of zoom in from there. So, all right, there we go. So, two minutes. So, we got two minutes left, and we'll see kind of what happens here. But I'm pretty sure that it's just going to kind of dribble um, at this point. It'll just kind of dribble a little bit until these two starting to kiss. And then everybody's going to, you know, wait for something dramatic to happen. I'm pretty sure uh, the probability looks that way. Could be wrong, but we shall definitely see on that. Yep, RSI, that's what's oversold, right? Oversold, but only at 30, 32. Doesn't normally go down underneath the 32 RSI. Doesn't normally. Looks like it's hitting a bottom. This is starting to gap away pretty good, so now it's start correcting back. Maybe. But it's on a downtrend, so guess what? You stick with the 20 MA downtrend always, right? On a sideways market, what do you do? Buy under the red, sell over the red. Buy under the red, sell over the red. So we're just going to let it kind of keep going down until I can start seeing a curve. And then I'm going to start buying in under that red, right? And then sell over the red. You know what I mean? Buying under the red, you see this curve right here? You buy under it. Start seeing a curve it up, you sell it over the red, right? Somewhere in here, possibly here. Um, it broke the 200, so that tells you that it's on an uptrend. It's corrected back. I mean, if if you're if you're disciplined enough to really get in under here and you know see the 200 MA and not get out right here, like a lot of people do, and that's why a red bar comes up because everybody's afraid that it's gonna break that that 20 MA and start going down. Take your wins now. Take your wins now quick wins absolutely if you can discipline yourself and really look for the next bar before it starts going down that's the key that is the professional edge statistical professional edge in the any market stock market crypto market anywhere chinese market japanese market american market uk market doesn't matter all works the same because it's a moving average. It's a 20-day moving average, a 200-day moving average. You, you can't mess with the math on that. And you can't mess with, obviously, technical uh, analysis of the coin itself. You know, what thing, when things are happening on a five-minute basis and so on. This is where the money comes in and out. So, uh, we got four minutes left on this one. But as you can see, it's kind of just going sideways. Everybody's just like, well, wait a minute. The 200 MA is going up, Right. But this is going down. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And it's still going to just constantly just get ready to meet with the red, with the 20 MA. And then something, I believe, something's going to happen here. So um, I'm going to leave this running and uh, we'll just kind of we'll watch it from there. Um, you know, let's just watch it on a three-minute chart as it seems like it goes a little faster. 
uh, for us anyways. You know, normally when I'm trading here, you know, this is Coinigy and you can obviously, you know, set up, you know, um, your APIs with KuCoin and Binance and with pretty much any exchange out there. So you can buy and sell and put stop points right here and uh, it, it'll do it on the exchange itself. Well, I, I don't like doing that. I like actually going to the exchange itself. They use TradingView on the exchange and um, it's the same difference really to me. Um, but at least you're in the market of KuCoin, you know, you're on the KuCoin uh, platform and you're on the KuCoin market. So when things happen, you can see that things are happening. You can see who's buying and selling. And I'm not saying you can't do that here, uh, charts by TradingView or, um, you know, Coinigy, but um, I just like knowing um, that I'm on Q KuCoin with the exchange open, almost like E-Trade if you're ever, you know, stock trading. Um, so you're kind of more in control and it feels more comfortable to me, more secure than using uh, an external source like Coinage or TradingView. Even though I love them and I use them every day, um, it's just uh, it, it's it's just the fact that when I'm trading money, I want to ensure that um, trades are going through when I want them to go through. Stop losses are put where they need to be put, and it just seems more comfortable to me uh, than you know putting my APIs on an, on an external um, platform like Coinage. I like it. I mean, I have TradingView in my affiliate links. I love TradingView. But um, when it actually comes to trading and, and hitting that buy button and sell button and stop points and, you know, if your futures, you know, they have long and shorts you can do on here. Um, I would just much rather be on the actual exchange myself. KuCoin, Binance, you know, uh, Kraken, you know, GDAX, where, whatever you guys are trading on. But I like KuCoin um, and I have, you know, my Ethereum on there anyways, so uh, at least some Ethereum. So uh, we will go from there. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm going to be uh, starting. Um, to show you guys live um, and probably take one Ethereum and just start trading it live. So you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about, exactly what I'm doing. Um, and show you real wins and, and the losses that I take, you know what I mean? And then the ratio between my wins and losses and the stop losses. You know, it's, I kind of mentioned this on my last video. Um, actually, I, I really mentioned it was the uh, risk to ratio return, one to two. You know, you risk one to win two. You risk two to win four. You risk four to win eight. You risk, you risk eight to win 16. Um, so it really doesn't matter if you're day trading, swing trading, core trading does not matter so that's uh that's kind of where we're at at this point and like you can see even on the three minute chart it's going sideways the red 20 ma is on a downtrend and everything is going to stay under that 20 ma until it connects to each other kind of kisses each other and um you know hopefully we get a little bit more read on the uh, 200 ma but this is going to act as a overall support and resistant line so it broke that uh, support line so it's now becoming a resistant point and that's exactly what it's doing now that the red 20 ma is under uh, we shall see if it's a power move to the downside you know this starts downtrending the 200 and the 20 ma starts downtrending it's going to cause a power play um macd says that it's about ready for a buy and right now it's oversold so the rsi so uh, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? That's kind of the question. Do you get in now? Well, it's up to you. If you I mean, it's underneath the red. You know what I mean? It's going sideways. If you feel like it's not going to go any farther down um, before correction happens, well, you know, go ahead and buy it here because it is underneath the red. So if it keeps going down, it's going to correct back up and you'll make profits just a little later, you know what I mean, on a three-minute chart. So it just really depends on how you want to trade how disciplined you are, and how much do you believe in your probabilities on there. So uh, that's really it in a nutshell, but we shall see. You know, I mean, I'm going to sit here, like I said, I'm going to sit here and watch it um, until we get something different here. And boom, and as you can see, it was ready for a sell, and it was oversold, so it's ready for a buy. So now it's correcting itself back to the 20 MA, right? And it looks like that there was, I mean, coming right out the gate, there was already a battle here. You know, the greens won today, so it started here, right? I'm sorry, starts right here, and then 
it got ate up by all the sellers. And now it's finally, they're finally winning up here. Finally winning at 226.27. Um, that's why I'm not going to look at a three minute chart for the most part. But I just want to show you this um, from the 20 MA, 200 MA power point of view where the 200 MA is your king and your 20 MA is your queen. And that's really just like chess, queen. Now, as you can see, boom, was not a buy point, right? Was oversold, but still had room to go down. And because this is on a downtrend, boom, it takes a downtrend point. I mean, it, I mean, it really does. I mean, that's, that's why you just want to stay disciplined and say, on a sideways market, you buy underneath and you sell over on the sideways market. It may turn into a downtrend market here real soon. You know what I mean? Where these both of these start going down. That's a power play downtrend to the downside and will break these uh, these, uh, you know, sideways support resistant points, you know, the high and the low, basically, um, from the beginning of the sideways market. So, you know, keep these things in mind when you guys are trading, you know what I mean? And now look, the same candle, the greens was green at one point in time, was red at one point in time, and now it's just a little bit of red right now, right at the end, six seconds. And that's a lot of people do that too, is you wait till the end of the candle to buy and sell. So you have more insurity of exactly what you're looking at instead of buying it in the beginning of a three minute candle and all of a sudden it turns, you know, green to a solid bar red to a little bit of red now. So what happened? Right? The reds won the day. Barely, barely, way up here. So as you can see, it started way down here green, went all the way up, turned red, and then Greens ate it all the way back up and still closed it down here. But the Reds won the day. The sellers won the day. So guess what that means? All right. That is the weakest bearish, the weakest of a, of a hammer. I mean, so thin, so nothing that that basically tells you right at the end of everything. It was a red bar, right? Right at the end of everything, the greens ate it all up. So the probability of this one turning green from starting out is very, very high. And that's exactly what it did. And now it's right by the 20 MA. So this is the power of the 20 and the 200 MA. Okay. It's gone down. Right. And it may be going now for a swing. Right. Yep. So that's what we're looking for right now. It's gone down, swings up, right? Now it's gone over the blue. Now it's gone under the blue, gone under the blue. So let's see how much it takes for it to swing. Could be real quick, could be, you know, real gradual. This is Ethereum, you know, Bitcoin is a little bit more uh, um, violent in their movements uh, to, you know, be through the 20 and the 200 MA. And that's good, you know, because it really tells you some definite things, but it's very quick and violent when these things happen. And Ethereum seems to be a little bit more gradual. I like the pace of it. As much as I hate USDT, KuCoin doesn't work with USD, Ethereum USD. So I'm just going to work with USDT. Um, and then, uh, you know, turn it back into, you know, Bitcoin or, you know, USD or something. I'm just, I'm not going to keep it in USDT. I always put it into something else. Um, but I feel it's going to be going up, you know, so, um, and then go from there. So my goal is here is my Ethereum, right? I want to put one Ethereum on there. Um, I want to double the profits. So when with the profits that I make, right? I can either pay bills or I can put it into my dog fund. So, I mean, it, it's going to be allocated somewhere. Well, I'm useful uh, in my life. So uh, let's see what's happening here. Yep. So as you can see, the worst, uh, I would say the least bear signal is this long, long, long fight here. And it finally turned red. Sellers won the day barely. And now the greens are taking him out. Right. Sellers brought it all the way down to here. The greens now ate it back up in a battle. And now the greens start being victorious and it's breaking the 20 MA right now. And as you can see, right at the end, the sellers came in and said, nope, not for you today. And that's again, you know what I mean? It's it still would have been a great point to sell right here. Still, it's still going on a downtrend. It's going to start either here or down here. So um, it's, it's still, I'm sorry, still at a buy point, 
down here somewhere. So, but it's still on the way down. You haven't really seen a bulk up here. So uh, let's see if this starts bowling up. And once you start seeing it bowling up, it's a good time to start buying in on a sideways market. Remember, keep that in mind, on a sideways market, all right? I'm gonna zoom in again, all right. I mean, I'm sorry I keep moving, zooming in and out, but I always look at things from a different point of view just to kind of make sure that I'm still either in a sideways market. And let me zoom out. As you can see, we're still in the sideways market. And where we are in the sideways market? About halfway down, almost like a Fibonacci, if you think about it. Um, and uh, that's really the sideways market at this point. Um, you know, and I'll even throw a Fibonacci in there uh, just to kind of give you guys, uh, you know, uh, something of what I'm looking at. Uh, you know, we won't do it there. Let's do it right on the lines here uh, of the of this. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, we are just over the 0.5 mark, which is just the halfway mark on this green here, right? So it's kind of in between right now, and but it's on its way down. So it's going to be. Support and resistance for the most part. Cousin support lines is what the Fibonacci's work as for day trading, swing trading, core trading. It all works. It's just the way you have to you look at it and you use it. You know, again, I, I listen to people on YouTube and they all say that it's, um, uh, you know, technical trading is only 50-50. It doesn't work. And it's, it only totally shows you the past. It doesn't show you the future. You know, of course it doesn't show you the future, but it shows you probabilities and brings your probabil probability up. And if you can learn the, the language of these candles, they're gonna help you out the most. What battle is occurring? Couple candles back and then start, you know, uh, reading the language and finding out what the next thing is going to happen, right? So just MACD just bought, uh, just went over the buy signal. So people are gonna possibly buy in, but as you can see, it's on a downtrend. So everyone's skeptical. Why, why do you want it to boom up just back to the 200 MA because it's acting as a resistant point now. Um, unless it's going to wave up over that. And if it waves up over that, I'm telling you, I mean, things happen. You know, power plays start becoming forming and, you know, things just start happening. So uh, the RSI has gone back up, as you can see. Uh, just from on this, yeah, from that red to that green, the RSI has gone up. And it's over the 20 MA. So let's see what happens on the next one. This is really where it starts getting, um, you know, you start getting pressure because you're like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? It's about ready for me to start looking at sell points, right? Because it's on a sideways market. So I bought it down here somewhere, right? And now it's kind of, it's starting to bowl back up and it's now over, the green is over the 20 MA. Now it's over the 20 MA. And let's see how much strength we get on this bar. Is it going to break the 200 MA is kind of the question now. If you start seeing this go sideways and then back up, now you have to question whether it's going to break the 200 MA or not. Either way, you're making profits at this point, right? When you bought it at 226, and this is a three minute chart, so I would never do that for this little bit of money. But as you can see, you know, you can do it at 226. Um, and then you, you know, you just wait, you're at 226, you know, 29 now. So you made about 15 cent profit, which is nothing, but still, um, and you know, it's, it's just kind of the way that, uh, you can look at it. So now that we've been looking at that, you know, let's look at a five minute chart and see what, what the hell is going on. So yeah, as you can see, same thing, could have bought it down here. And now it's starting to correct itself by point possibly. From the MACD and the RSI is at 40. So it's got room to grow and a little bit of room to go down. Um, so it's it's the questions you have to ask yourself. What's the probability of it going down? What's the probability of it going up? It's on a downtrend. Okay. That's a support resistant. It went underneath the support. And now it's kind of acting as a resistant line. And this is coming down to kiss it. So something is going to happen here. And it looks like it's ready to buy if that is actually kissing possibly buy point hasn't broke it yet 
And it looks like it's on, this is starting to go on uh, buying. So it's starting to get bought out with relative strength and go back up to at least 50% um, on here. I'm, or 50, I'm sorry. So, uh, you know, again, I'm showing you many, many different ways of looking at this, but I'm using the same technique. So it, whether we're looking at a five minute chart, three minute chart, 30 minute chart, hour chart, doesn't matter. I'm using the same technique of the downtrend of the 20 MA and which you know which way is the 200 MA going on here. Does not matter. Now again, I'm going to show you in future videos, real trading going on using my own Ethereum, my own money um, to show you how this works and that it actually works. And I'm not blowing some smoke, giving you some news out there that you probably could have you know, read yourself um, and, uh, uh, you know, give you my point of view from a news fundamental point of view, you know, we, no one knows if you're not part of the project, you have no idea what the fundamentals are, um, analysis of any coin is really, I mean, it, you know, I, we get big guys like crypto crow, uh, you know, I, I follow crypto crow, crypto, Bitcoin, Chris, um, and a lot of people, and they all give you news. Crypto Crow really doesn't do give you news anymore because he's so he's, uh, you know, uh, in demand right now with ICOs and other players all around because he's a big influencer. Um, but he doesn't really know that much about technical analysis, at least from the past. He may have learned um, since then, but in the past year or so, you know, I've heard him say that he doesn't understand Fibonacci retracement. Um, and, you know, but he's learning as he's as he's going, apparently. Um, he has a great, you know, new computer setup, apparently, Crypto Crota. So, um, and you have Crypto Bitcoin Chris, you know, yeah, he, he gives you a lot of news, you know, and uh, a lot of what he thinks is important that you should know in the news. But again, all the stuff that he's finding um, are from journalists, you know, and then they could be lying and he doesn't know it. He just doesn't know that they're lying. I, you know, I like Crypto Bitcoin Chris um, and uh, what he kind of stands for is just, you know, uh, he wants to be independent and entrepreneur and not work anymore. And so he's built a Patreon and so on and so forth. I respect that. Um, and I'm trying to do something in the same respect where I don't want to build a Patreon. I just, um, I'm doing crowdfunding um, and, I, and I, I want to work. I just want to work for myself as a nonprofit organization, uh, dog sanctuary, dog rescue. And then we can go, you know, and then I can, you know, mine cryptocurrency as well to sustain that dog rescue um and sanctuary uh for big dogs you know I mean, but obviously bigger dogs are harder to get adopted so that's kind of what my goal is is to uh get the big dogs out of the heat um take them somewhere where they can thrive um rehabilitate and uh get um adopted if possible um, and if not, you know, they're in a sanctuary, they're, they're able to, to thrive and survive and protect the land and so on and so forth. So that's my goal. Um, but, you know, like I said, the news, you really got to take the news with a grain of salt. I mean, unless you're really talking to somebody that's in the project and they're not bullshitting you. Okay. You know, take for instance, EOS, you know, I don't like EOS. Um, I don't like tether either, but you know, I'm going to use it. Um, but I don't like EOS and there's no way, there's no reason for me to use EOS. So. Um, and, uh, so that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do for the dogs. Um, and this is what I'm doing is I'm showing you actual technical analysis in action so you can see what's going on. Now, as you can see, there was a buy point. Okay. Now it started a new five minute candle. Okay. MACD tells you that that was a buy point. Uh, what was the RSI? RSI is telling you it's about 42. So there's room, much room to grow and a little bit room to go down. So the probability of it going down is low, even though, let me correct myself, because this is going down and because this is hitting a resistant point, right? That is going to be a sell. Yeah, that is looking more like a sell point than it is a buy point. As can can you see that, guys? And it just happened. I mean, it literally just happened that it just turned to the downside. Um, it's kissing, but it hasn't crossed it. And this is why you wait till the end of the of the candle, uh, the four. So we're at four minutes right now, but we really want to wait until it hits um about a minute maybe even 30 seconds and then you can really find out exactly what's going on with this candle and then hit that buy button hit that sell button um right at that you know right at that point right at that money point and buy it whatever the the, the price is at that point
or sell it. You know what I mean? Depending on what you know your uh, your plan is, or you know whatever you're doing at that point. Uh, sideways market. So let's take this Fibonacci out. We don't really need that in there anymore for the most part. So as you can see, it turned red and it went all the way down based on this downtrend and the resistant point on the 200 MA and the greens are barely, barely winning it at this point. But there was a battle. I mean, we saw that battle happening and now the battle's gone and it's leaving this little bit of green right here starting way down here as it should have started and boom, gone up. It started, the reds took over, took it all the way down, and now the greens are barely winning it at the moment. And that's where I, you know, these things change. In a three minute, five minute, one minute, these things will change all of a sudden. So wait till the end of the candle, closer to the end, and then you can buy and sell at that point if, that, if you feel like it's time to do it. I think it's still going on a downtrend. You know, we still got a little ways to go. It's only halfway through. And it can go down, you know what I mean, another third or so. But it is theoretically halfway. If it wanted to go sideways here and then break up to a new high, uh, it could definitely do that potentially. But it's, you know, from that point, I would say to that point, that is almost about the halfway point on this sideways market. So it makes a little bit of sense, you know, when it comes to a perspective of a trader. That's what they look at as well. So therefore, that's what we should be looking at. So that's what I'm showing you guys at this moment. So we're at two minutes right now. And now the reds are won it, the sellers, right? Hit a resistant point. Didn't believe it was going to break that and turn this into here. And boom. And now it's going back down. So this is where you get your discipline comes into action. Um, and uh, again, if you're waiting to buy in, right? If you're waiting to buy in five minute candle waiting to buy in still we're at a mine and we're at a minute and it hit a it hit a resistance so it's still on its way down so let's wait you know let's play the five minute candle for a little bit and let's wait you know what i mean i'm like okay, i can wait you know i you you block out some time and make sure that that's when you're trading so i'm trading from 6 30 to about 9.30. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I'm going to show you, you know, um, what this all means. So there we go. Minute in, right? Now it's showing you way more data of what's going on. And look at that fight. The greens try to steal it. And the, and the sellers are coming back in telling you, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that. Um, and we're at 50 seconds left. Yeah. The RSI, as you can see, it's still going to that sell, sell, sell. And again, that makes sense. If people bought down here, sold up here, it's about halfway down there. And now we're getting some, some fight again. You know what I mean? And what's going on? Oh, man. And now look, the buyers came back in and broke the table. Broke it 200 way up. And now it's starting to correct this is why you wait to the end of the candle. Now you see what, what's going on. Now you see what's happening. So it's a bit more tricky because you got the 200 and the 20 MA getting closer to each other. But, you know, it, it really just works the same way. You know, it, you, you go with it, you buy underneath the red and you're going to sell over it, right? So well, let's see if it starts going over or if it's actually hit a resistant point. And it's going down. So this is where we're getting a little precipice here on what we need to do or what we should do is, you know, if this starts going back up, that may be a buy point as well. You know, you can consider that a buy point. And if you start seeing everything starting to uptrend um, and buy it and then, you know, sell it up here, you know, it, it may do that. So let's let's see what happens. This is again, like I said, it's kind of a precipice, but that was a buy point, as you can see. And that is on its way up. So the RSI is on its way up. Let me see if I can get the candle back because it's not showing up. It seems to take about a minute or so before it actually shows up on this one. So there we go. So I am finally just updated about a minute, four or five minutes. And this is why I don't trade on Coinigy because of these, these, these little lag mark, you know, spots. I can't, I can't have that. So um, boom, it's gone up and now it's over the red over the blue and it's green, right? 
three minutes in. So I'm going to wait just a little bit, okay? If I see that pop up, you know what I mean, at least up to about right here as a green bar, I'm buying in. And there we go. I'm going to buy in right there. Three minutes in, I'm going to and I'm gonna risk it a little bit, and I'm going to buy in because I don't want it to keep popping up. It's over the red, right? That really broke it, but the strength of it now on an uptrend, now on, on going up basically in price at the moment, MACD is broke and the RSI has gone up and it's kind of riding in the middle there. So um, no help, but help, okay? It's gone up, it's buy, it's, it's buy point, it's broke, it's broke, it's over the red and it's green. So to me, that's a buy point and it's about 33% of a bar that I feel like that it, it, it can keep going up. So boom, I give it about that much width, uh, I would say, and then start, I buy in. So 226.50 is what I bought it. Okay, let's put a little... Let's put a little trend line on there and I'll, you know, let me put a square in there. Where's my squares? There we are. So right there, that's where I bought it, right there. 226.50. That's two and a half minutes in. Now, let's see which way it goes, all right? And this is, again, this is, should have bought it down here, but I'm taking the guesswork out of it. I want the guesswork out of it. So let's stick to the meat and potatoes of trading. And this is where we're at. All right, good. I'm gonna move it over here a little bit so you guys can see it in the middle and kind of show you what's going on here with the trend, right? So now the 200 MA is going to act as a support line, right? And if this starts going on a trend, uptrend, all right, it's definitely ready to go up. The RSI moved down a little bit, as you can see, and it's just right at the 51 mark. So just over halfway on the RSI, overbought, oversold mark. One minute left, one and a half minutes, and it's still green and strong. It's not moving down, it's not moving up, but it is green and strong, okay? The reason why it's because the trend of the 20 MA is still going down and these two are getting close to each other. What's going to happen? That's the question. And it has room to go down. It has room to go up, but it has more room to go down in this sideways market. So let's uh, we shall see what happens. Was this a good buy or was this not a good buy? At this 20 to 26.50 mark, just over the, the, the 20 MA, because it broke on this solid one and then turn green on the next one, okay? Turn green. Now let's see if it gets away from the 200 MA. It starts getting away from the 200 MA. I believe that I'm golden at that point. My probabilities go way, way up. Um, so 30 seconds left. Let's see if I made a good buy. Again, with this, um, I can do a one to two ratio, right? So where's my stop point at? I mean, I guess that's the really question. If I bought it at 220, right, 225, 200, so it would be um, uh, a, a, a one to two ratio. So if I'm on a five minute chart, which I don't like playing, I'll usually play 30 minute charts. But if I want to put it on here, so I want to put uh, 226, 226, 25, right? So we'll do 226, 25. And that's about right there, right? So 226, 25 is my stop point. Okay, and what I want to do is, and I was at 226.50, so 227 is going to be my return. That's what I want. That is, that is exactly where I need this to go up and for me to sell out in order for me to get my, my one to two, right? 225, that's 25 cents and 50 cents. 25 and 50, one to two. So we shall see. If that happens, and that's halfway in between, you know, a little bit more. So let's, you know, so that's that's really the goal of this sell right here, two twenty six fifty. And yep, we're gonna have a new bar show up here real shortly. Oh, well, let's see what happens. Yep, there we go. New bar is happening. Turn green right out the market. It's just level. All right, MACD is up. RSI is going sideways, so it looks beautiful for a upswing on this sideways market, not an uptrend, an upswing on the market. 
So, uh, you know, sorry about my terminologies. My terminologies get a little mixed up sometimes, but if you get what I'm laying down, then we're golden. If not, leave a comment and I can, cl I can clarify it for you. Um, you know, whether it be on, you know, text or, you know, I can make another video and address it at that point as well. So, uh, you know, don't forget I'm doing a cold storage coin giveaway too. So please subscribe, you know, likes are always good, um, and, uh, comment. So, uh, you know, I can remember, uh, people cause at a hundred subscribers, I'm giving away a cold storage coin and at 150, I'm giving away a cold storage coin as well. You're choosing Bitcoin or Ethereum. So, all right, three minutes in. And we are still green, and my buy point uh, is looking kind of weird right now because again, it's the 20 MA is still kind of on a decline, and the 200 MA is on an up. And boom! Now look at what happened. I mean, right in our faces. Now it's going kind of on. It's it's correcting the 20 MA, and this is on an upswing. So guess what's going to happen? I believe. If it stays on this track, okay, it's going to correct. It'll start correcting up here, obviously. Um, you know, I'm not saying because of this as a uh, resistant point, um, but I'm actually saying it uh, just based on the strength of these candles and where it has been. So it's gone up over the red. It had a nice big punch up. And now it's kind of just dwindled just a little bit down, about halfway down, and it's punching back up. So it's going to kind of go up a little bit, um, unless it's going to hit a new high and go into a power play. What it's a power play is when the 20 MA and the 200 MA go the same direction. And in this case, if it keeps up on an uptrend direction, it's going to go up here. You know, it'll correct down a little bit, but it'll 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 be a power play and it'll be back up here, um, possibly after a wave, but. It's looking like that, yep, it's been bought. It's not completely oversold at this point. It's only at 65. So once you start to hit about 70, 75, you definitely know you're oversold. Um, and it doesn't look like it breaks to 70 very much. So we're, you know, we got a little bit of ways to go up and it looks like it's going. And we'll see if it still goes on an uptrend in about a minute, in about a minute. All right, so I've been playing this for, I don't know how long, probably about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, about 45, 55 minutes. Um, and this is what we are seeing at this point. So 226.50 I bought in, stop point at 226.25, and uh, 227 is my goal here. So again, I would never trade for this little bit of money, but I just want to show you on a five-minute chart of what's going on on here. Uh... 40 seconds left. Let's see what happens. As you can see, I only have four cents left to go before I hit my mark of one to two risk return ratio. And uh, I'm pretty much probably going to sell it at that point. It's probably going to go up. But um, I, I again, this video is just to show you the soundness of following the 20 in, in the 200 MA as an overall controller with your MACD and the RSI as your accentuators to bring your probabilities up to a more manageable um, uh, and emotional feeling to say, okay, I can manage 75%. I can manage 60% wins uh, over losses, 85%, uh, so on and so forth. Um, just, you know, weigh your own probabilities on here. But uh, the way I'm doing it, I'm doing it about 70 to 75% probability that I'm going to win as opposed to lose as long as I use the 20 and the 200 MA um, in the in the correct ways like I've been showing you guys in the past two three four videos so uh, Now we're looking for another bar to show up. This is why I don't like coinage because it takes a little while for it to get going and uh, Yeah, still waiting. So still waiting for that Five minute bar to show up. There we go. Now it's showed up about 40 seconds in and it's starting pretty good it's starting green So let's see what happens if it goes up to my uh, 227 um, I'm going to buy a sellout because look at all that strength. I mean, it took so much just to get it over the 20 MA and the 200 MA that uh, I believe there's going to be some relief coming here pretty soon. Uh, possibly up here, but, you know, I'm going to take my one to two on a sideways market. One to two sounds really good to me. Um, starting to be coming on an uptrend. They're both starting to go on an upward swing. 
So, I mean, you know, things to look for, things to look for, you know, can I be patient and wait, you know, for it to possibly take more profits? Absolutely. I can absolutely wait for that. But I'm not going to on this trade anyways. And this is just a mock trade anyway. Um, but I just want to show you how sound the technique is um, that day traders, swing traders, core traders use all the time. Oop, no, look at that. Now it's moved back down, right? 226.73. It's a lot of strength right there, you know, one, two, three bars, you know, and it's bound to correct somewhere, but that's a pretty quick correction. I do got to say, happens a lot, as you can see. So we'll see if it hits the 227 mark, I'm golden on this sell, on this buy. Anyway, so 226.50, yeah, just need to hit 227 at this point. And like I said, I'm going to fast forward through this so you guys don't have to sit here and, and watch it. You know what I mean? Um, but definitely going to fast forward it through here uh, so you guys can see the results of just this one trade um, on a five minute chart, which isn't very much money on, you know, on Ethereum. Um, so we shall see. Um, I'm kind of going off of the uh, saying, you know, Bitcoin is for investors and other, every other altcoin is for traders. So I'm going to be trading altcoins and uh, my Bitcoin is actually my bucket that I throw everything in. So when I turn this Ethereum into USDT, um, uh, after I sell out here, um, then I, um, um, I turn it into Bitcoin and then I move it into my Bitcoin uh, pot. So that's all just stays there, my investment pot. Um, and if I make enough, you know, I'll start throwing some into um, my uh, my dog rescue, dog sanctuary uh, pot there. Um, but on my dog walking, which I do on the side as a side hustle, that's what's basically going into the dog sanctuary pot at the moment. Um, and of course, my uh, crowdfunding. Uh, when I finally get a video up uh, with the uh, platform, with the project on the Start Some Good platform, um, then I can actually post it and start um, crowdfunding. Uh, and of course, you know, around November, December is actually a good time to start crowdfunding as well. Um, just, you know, uh, based on the extra income everybody has around December time and so on and so forth. And people are always looking for write-offs um, and crowdfunding is a great write-off, um, especially for a nonprofit 501c dog sanctuary um, sustained by cryptocurrency mining. So I, I think that's a really good idea um, and it, it's attainable. So let's hope that I'm right on that point. Uh, and let's see, we're at 30, 30 seconds left and it's about halfway up that last bar after I bought. Now, could I have sold off right here? Absolutely. But I believe that it's on an upswing. It's, and, you know, this RSI went and corrected itself a little bit based on that which is great to see actually, because now it has room to grow as opposed to being up here, had no room hardly. So now it has at least a little bit more room to grow on the next bar. Um, and I believe that it may correct back down the green to the red, but I, I don't think so at this point. I think it's going to stand an upswing from here. And we'll go from there. And boom, as you can see, right there, sold off right there, 227.02. So right there, my one to two just worked in a span of 15 minutes, okay? And that's why I usually use the 30-minute charts is that I can see actually more of what's going on um, and, you know, able to use, you know, sometimes the five-minute chart to kind of gauge where I need to, what I'm looking at um, to pinpoint accuracy when I'm going to start buying in. So if I bought in right here, right, just over the red on this big red bar, Boom, less than a half a bar, I made profits, you know, and I wouldn't, wouldn't have done that, obviously. I obviously would have waited till it got up over this. And as you can see, this is on a sell or a buy point and the RSI is about 55. So it's got room to grow and it's kind of just kissing each other right now. And we'll see if it breaks out on the next one well that's like eight nine minutes away from here so uh, well like i said you know i wanted to show you the five minute chart and i wanted to show you that that's 
how it works. And now it's even, I mean, like as you can see, it's a power play. Now it's on a power move. Um, again, if, if I was really trading this, um, I probably wouldn't have made my, taken my profit right there. I probably would have waited just based on, now it's on an upswing and the 200 MA is now on an uptrend as well. So this is telling me that it's going to start and it's going to start going possibly up a little bit more and then start correcting back down and it'll probably hit the red probably somewhere around here, 226.75. Um, that's my assumption anyways on here. I can't predict the future, um, but, but the probability shows that the upswing and the upswing, it's going to be up here before it corrects back down. Um, you know, 226.60 to 226.80, it's going to correct back down unless it keeps going back up. Keeps going back up, it's going to keep going up. And we're going to go from there. Ooh, damn mosquito got me. So... All right, so that's it for this one. You know, uh, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. No value to you guys, but it all has great value to me. Keep up the grind.